morning everybody it's friday morning and wow what a glorious morning it is the sun's shining and i've just arrived at a new venue which i've got a ticket until march the end of march 2018 now it's one of the newer waters on the uh, on the embryo project phil's lake i know a couple of guys that have already fishing it from local around the area and um it's had quite a few fish put into here, a good few hundred fish and uh, it would been silly of me to turn the opportunity down of, um, of bagging myself a ticket because it gives me a water that hopefully I can come down in the winter day sessions over the weekend etc and hopefully nip myself a few fish along the way so it would have been silly of me like I say to turn the opportunity down and uh, get myself a, an opportunity of fish in this water. Now, um, don't really know too much about it. Um, as you would have seen, nothing but nothing but fishing. Joe has recently done a video for Carpology, so um, I've been watching that over the last couple of days and picking up a few ideas about the lake and stuff like that. But like I say, it's Friday morning. It's about quarter past nine. The uh, car park's empty, and the weekend ticket is due to start at 10 a.m. So I'm in no rush, if I'm completely honest with you, to get a rod out or anything like that. What I'm going to do is probably slip the wellies on, go for a lap or two of the lake. And just figure out the layout of the lake and stuff like that so enough talking more action let's get going and uh, go and have a look and see what this lake's all about Right, so I've just done one lap and I'm just halfway round on my second lap and uh, to say I'm impressed is an understatement. I um, Fair play to the guys down at this lake because um, they've really made a nice looking lake, really, um, really tidy, still really natural looking with sort of all of the uh, tree stumps running around the swims and the steps down into the edge of the water and uh, just generally the sort of um, upkeep and uh, general sort of well-being of the lake is just really testament to those guys hard work so so fair play to those all involved because yeah it's really nice all the grass is you know cut down and i'm not having to fight. i'm used to obviously fighting through like ne nearly knee high grass etc just down the road on my normal syndicate and uh yeah I'm, like i said i'm pretty impressed so just stood in a swim at the moment where uh joe so uh from carpology nothing but fishing just stood in the swim where he'd done his session that uh of that video that he recently put up online and I've seen two two fish show or I've seen at least disturbance down this right hand side the winds trickling in from from left to right and I just spin the camera around so you get a good view of all of the water from this swim as you would obviously any point swim really and uh, I've seen a couple of a couple of uh, shows not full on boshes just subtle rolls down this side now a couple of the other guys aren't going to be down i know one of the guys perry he's not going to be down till sort of maybe between five and six and i've just had a phone phone call with matt and he's going to be down anything between sort of 12 and two so i've got a couple of hours disposal at my hands so what i'm probably going to do is just load the barrow up and um just stay mobile i think for a few hours just cast around a few wafters with um, pva bags and uh See if I can nick an early fish. Really, stay mobile. Just use what I need to use off the um, off the barrow, and then obviously once the other guys get down, see where we want to plot up for the weekend, and uh, make that home, and go from there. Really. So I'm just going to carry on the last little half of this lap, go and load the barrow up, and then uh, we can get on the move, and uh, see if we can nick ourselves an early fish. So I'll catch it with you once I'm all sorted.
it's uh, just gone 11 o'clock and um, I've been scooting up and down this road bank not really kind of seeing anything or giving me any any sort of indication as to where these fish might be now um, since then like I say it's just gone 11 two more people have um, turned up so one opposite me in the swim that I'm in at the moment and uh, one in the point which is uh, soon to be two in the point when um, when one of his family members comes down so two is going to be doubled up over there so that's potentially six lines out from that corner and obviously the guy opposite me um, and obviously I'm in this one now there's a few reasons why I kind of opted to choose this swim really so what I'll do is I'll just give you a quick rundown as to why I've uh, chosen the swim that I'm currently in so the first reason why I've chosen it is because it gives me quite a lot of visibility of the water itself. Now obviously not knowing this water, never visiting the place or seeing it before, I want to be able to obviously keep my eyes on it as much as possible to see what happens at what time of day, where fish might be showing at certain periods of, you know, of the day, where does the sun move throughout the day, what point of the lake sees the sun the best part of the day, you know, margins that are warmed up, etc. So I've situated myself in this swim which gives me, apart from obviously down in this corner, gives me a whole view of pretty much the entire lake. And like I say, down in this corner as well is the only part I really can't see. But everything else, I have visibility of everything that's going on. Other people catching, um, you know, shows at certain times of day. I can really keep my eyes on the water and react to if I see anything happening. So, uh, so that's one, the first reason why I chose, um, chose this swim in particular. So another reason is because uh, it gives me a couple of options really, well a few options if I'm, if I'm honest. Uh, I've got a good open access to a main bulk of the area of the lake, you know, a good open water area where I can drop two rods, put bait over the top and hopefully draw fish into a certain area in particular. And I'll swing the camera around again, obviously you see I've got an island as well. So what I'm going to do is hopefully just drop one off the corner of this island. Not tight because I've noticed there's a lot of bird life getting around, uh, getting around the island. So I don't want it too tight because I don't think it's probably that that deep off the uh, off the end of it. And obviously there's a few overhangs and stuff. So what I'm probably going to do is drop one off the edge of the corner of the island, good rod length or so at least, and uh, that way I know that that's going to be fishing and out of harm's way. But uh, yeah, it gives me a lot of access to open water, the island, and obviously this, this run through here, which I believe is a, a deeper area of the lake. So a couple of options there for, for a few rods. So that's another reason why I chose this swim. Another reason why I uh, decided to plot up in this swim, because the wind has decided to swing around and start to push down in this area. Now, I'm not overly sure if it's gonna stay pushing down here, but I thought, you know what, the sun's out, it's a nice warm breeze. I've been stood on the end of it and it's not cold at all. So if this continues, then that'll be perfect if that wind's gonna start hacking, because I know it is meant to get up a little bit. I'm talking 20, 30 mile an hour winds. So I know we've had a lot worse lately, but still that's enough that hopefully should move a few fish around, I'm, I'm hoping. So just reacting to the weather conditions, really. Like I say, it's the sun shining. Um, there's an island we know that fish obviously love love an island they love just scooting around the islands any features like that in your lake then uh, they're always a fish magnet so just reacting to what the weather's doing sun's out directly above that island beating down on it and if it does obviously make an appearance through the weekend then I'm 99% sure fish have got to get around there um, again like I say the wind is pushing down here blowing in not so much into my face but left to right but blowing in this direction so we know fish like to follow follow a nice warm wind <clears throat> and like I say if it picks up as well then you know that's a couple of things in my favour really the wind the weather conditions that might might put a fish or two on the bank for me so they're the main reasons why I've chosen this swim so now I'm just going to crack on get all the kit out get the rods wrapped up I've had a few casts already so I know the sort of distance I want to be fishing so just time to get everything kind of set up and stuff now and then we can really start going through baiting up and, and stuff like that so I'll catch up with you in a little while So home set up, 
and uh, I've baited up my two chosen spots for this session. Rods have all been wrapped up to 19 wraps, same distance of the edge of the island, so if anything comes off the corner of that island, in the middle sort of bulk of water, coming from the middle bulk of water to the corner of that island, then I've got two baits that are going to be out there um, on a heavily baited area, and then I've got one off the corner of the island. So the rigs I'm going to be using are obviously tried and trusted hinge stiff rigs. Now what I'll do is I'll flip the camera around to show you what I'm going to um, what I'm going to be using bait wise, and just go through the components used that are used for for tying these rigs. So let's flip the camera around. So you've got a boom section as normal. Don't need to be that long down here to be fair. I've got like six, seven inches tops. That's the uh, semi stiff end trap, weedy green. Always used it in 20 pounds and it's perfectly strong. The coating is really, really good on that. It's really stiff. Not to the point where it's just, you know, straight as a ruler. It'll have a little bit of give once it takes on a little bit of water and it matches the lake bed perfectly. Then they just go to ready tied quarter choddies. Now, you know, I've got fat fingers and thumbs, so I've not got the patience nor the uh, the time to tie choddies up myself. But I find these short ones, I find these short ones to be perfect. They're the, they're the perfect length to be sitting up off that lake bed, about an inch or inch or so, inch and a half. And you can get the longer versions as well, which are probably like two or three inches. Now I always use the short ones. Had never had any problems, never had any slips, snap, anything like that. So I've got the utmost confidence in using them. So. I use them tied directly to the uh, the semi stiff with a loop at either end like that. So you just loop it on, short, small, small loop this end just to allow the bait and the swivel a little bit of uh, a little bit of movement in and around that area as and when fish come and suck up your bait. So in regards to hook bait, I'm going with on one the sticky Manila um, yellow one, so I, which I'm yet to try, and on the other two, I'm going to go sticky Manila white ones now got again utmost confidence in those white ones i've had a fair few fish off them since i've switched over to sticky manila and uh i can't get enough of them i need to get a new pot from completely honest with you because mine's literally running so low i've used that many but yeah i've been out and got the uh sticky yellow ones the manila yellow ones because i don't know i just quite like the look of them to be honest with you i think with um with the year turning over now i want something a little bit more visual you know they've seen it all over the last uh you know three four five months so i wanted something a little bit more brighter where i don't have to sacrifice as much bait but which is going to get their um get their attention because obviously going to stand out amongst anything else down there as well so it's quite deeper in and around this area so i wanted something that's quite visual on the bottom not something that's you know just going to be dull and uh I want something that's going to be blatantly obvious that this that is there. So, I'm with a yellow one, which I'm going to put one on that yellow one on the baited patch, along with a white one, and then a white one off the corner of the island. So, depending on if I get any fish and what colour it happens on, then I'm more than likely going to stick all three on um, that colour. But for now, I'm going to stick with two white and one yellow. Rods are all wrapped up, like I say, normal normal leg clip setup. I don't change out from anywhere that I go because obviously it's uh, you know. It's fitted to, to any fishery you can fish safely and effectively with this setup so let's get these rigs on them rods let's get these rods out and uh, see how the afternoon pans out I think Matt's not far away now so he'll be down he'll be down soon as well so we can go and punish him for some information but uh, yeah let's get these rigs on the go and uh, see if we can catch ourselves some fish so I'm just preparing my last rig ready to put out on the spot just really wanted to give you a quick little tip or hint as such really go and get yourself one of these little gardener sharpening stones I think they're about five or six quid tops but you just got a nice nice coating on them and basically you're just using it to just um, prime the point of your hook now it's not you know none of these kits where you're going to be grinding them down to literally nothing this will just take off the outer layer of the uh, hook coating and just make that hook a little bit more tackier now um, I use these all the time just you know just prepping those hook points ready to be recast just in case they've been you know rubbed up against anything as you're retrieving it in and all I'm doing is just running it down just gentle uh, pressure running it down the uh, point of the hook there I just usually do it about about 25 times and then I'm just rubbing it on the side of the hook just to round it off. 
and that'll make that hook just that sticky sharp again just in case you know like I say it's not as, as tacky as it could be but uh, just run it down like, like I say the sides 25 each side applying firm pressure I just I'm just protecting the uh, the hook as well just like between my thumb and my forefinger and just using the um, the block to just run down the side and you'll notice obviously on the uh, on the block itself obviously you can see the coating so I've used it quite a bit on uh, many of my hooks as I'm before I'm casting out but you'll see it obviously the uh, the coating just left on there you can like I say just use either side I tend to hold the the larger side because I've got fat fingers and thumbs and like I say just run it down the shaft of the the hook down towards the point obviously being careful not to run it over the point because obviously you're going to blunt it you're just looking just to uh, sharpen up and um, round off those edges and that'll make that hook point a lot more sticky sticky sharp as you can tell it's literally pricking in straight away i'm not one for you know whittling them down to nothing as long as they're uh, as long as they're tacky which that is then uh, i'm happy with that so well worth the investment for a fiver keep your hook points all up to you know all up to uh scratching not not blunt and they'll give you a lot more better hooking potential obviously it's that's sitting upright once that's once that's slightly pricked in that ain't going anywhere so well worth the investment a little garden of sharpening stone and uh go and grab yourself one Rods have all gone out, all gone out pucker. Two left hander, middle one on a uh, nice area, a nice clean area. See these trees just here, pretty much like your goalposts, really. Got two in there with around 10, 10 spawns over those two just for now. Yellow manila pop up, white manila pop up, hinge stiff rigs. So they've, all, they've gone out, they're banging, hopefully that's going to be my baited area my right hander is just over my shoulder just off that island which is the um, same distance as uh, these other two so um, that one's got a, again hinge stiff rig white manila pop up and that one's just got uh, <clears throat> just boily and literally two two spots of pellet around it so no glug sort of no feed it's just built, uh, as in glug baits and stuff you know no no attraction like that it's just pure boily five spoms of boily two spoms of pellet hoping that that's just as they're coming around that island they're just going to come in and out for come in and out for one or two baits and hopefully uh be able to uh, pick mine up along the way so that's my thinking for now it's probably just gone one o'clock it's really nice day it's the sun's been showing like been out most of the morning it's really warm so it's been really nice setting up with that sun on my you know sun on my back and uh it's like summer's summer's reappeared for a morning so just gonna chill out now for an hour or so matt should be on his way down shortly he's gonna jump into the swim next to me so just need to get a few last bits packed away but hopefully we can nick ourselves a fish on the first afternoon slash evening Obviously, it's a new water. I don't really know what the uh, well, you know what the crack is really with it all, but everything's done as best as I can do it now. So it's obviously down to these fish and whether they're up for it or not. So let's see what happens through the course of the afternoon, and um, I'll come back to you as and when something happens. So first blood to Matt. Nice little pretty one, little scaly one, just over thirteen pound. I've had a couple of uh, single beeps on my own rods, but actually nothing to uh, materialise of that yet. Taking on a little Ronnie rig. A little white pop-up. Just coming up to about half past eight, I think. So, night's still young. Plenty of time yet. Just made ourselves a little wager as well. On a uh, Chinese deal. Be rude not to. So, uh, I'm just going to be just going to be patient. My time will come, and I'll be getting a nice full belly tomorrow night. But yeah, this is a stamp of sort of like the fish that have been stocked into the uh, 
into the lake, just pretty little scaly things, anything between sort of, I don't know, 12 to 20, 20 pound, I believe. But good start to the weekend, so hopefully we'll have more to come. About half past two in the morning, geese are kicking off, but have a look down here. One sulking in the net, baby. Absolute one toner from nowhere. Have a look. Let's get him out on the mat. Well, it's about half past two in the morning. I've just had an absolute one toner from the right hand rod. Literally crashed out and uh, just absolutely ripped off. And we've got ourselves a nice 24 pound, three ounce common. Absolute stunning fish. Immaculate. Didn't really give me that much of a that much of a scrap, mind you. But look at this one. Not too bad, eh? Not too shabby for a first fish of the session. Twenty-four pound three ounces. Bar of gold. Happy days. As you would have seen, Matt had one earlier in the earlier on in the night. Or should I say, last night? But uh, so this is my contribution so far. Proper nice fish. Let's flip them around. Let's give you a look at the other side. Look at that one. 24 pound three ounces. Taken on hinge stiff ridge. Hinge, hinge stiff rig. Hinge stiff ridge. Half asleep still, I think. But look at him. That was taken off the baited patch with the other rod. Not sure which uh, which hook bait that was though, because that's disappeared in the uh, in the battle somewhere. So. Uh, I'll we'll have to check that one out in the morning, but um, it was either yellow or white, so whichever it was, the other one would be cranked in and put out on the same one. So let's uh, slip this one back and uh, get that rod back out. Good morning, then. So, Saturday morning, real quick update from me. Um, obviously, as you would have seen, I had one last night. <clears throat> well, last night, this morning. About 2.30 this morning, middle rod just absolutely melted off and uh, that resulted in that 24 pound 3 ounce common. <clears throat> Managed to get the rod sorted, get it back out, <clears throat> put a couple of spawns back over the top of that because I know the, the birds have been on me all day yesterday and you know I weren't overly confident anyway that there was any bait down there so I put a couple of spawns out after that fish <clears throat> and nothing else happened through the, uh, through the night. I had what I thought another take this morning massive drop back but then realised there was a nice uh, nice gathering of coots just over my spot and they've been punishing me since I've got here if I'm honest <clears throat> so uh, I've just put another couple of spawns worth of bait I think what I'm going to do over the course of this session after I put a load of bait out yesterday I think I'm just going to every couple of hours every two three hours just put two or three spawns out just to keep the fresh attraction going into into the lake over my spots just leaking off obviously all the uh, glug and whatever from the baits and hopefully picking off any fish that are in the vicinity or passing through so I'm going to uh, go and get some breakfast with Matt now we're going to uh, just going to drop down into his swim and have a bit of a morning social have a bit of a catch up punish him for the pictures and get them on my phone and uh, we'll see what happens through the course of the morning but yeah just a real quick update really and um, not too sure what else has happened around the lake but uh, but yeah happy to get off the mark so then, rest of the morning, quick update, it's been pretty uneventful, um, nothing else has happened, we've been down to Matt's swim, had a bit of a social um, sort of breakfast and stuff, all nice full bellies now, ready for the rest of the day. Um, it's come over quite overcast and um, nice bit of chop across the water, not that was uh, not the weather that was predicted, but um, it looked really good for a bite, yet we've not seen anything show. And considering there's a good few hundred fish in here, it's a bit strange that we're not seeing any, any fish showing themselves. It's um, Like I say, it's overcast, it's mild, there's a slight chop on the water. And it just seems like perfect conditions to you know, see fish giving themselves away. I'll just flip the camera around and just have a quick look. But, yeah, it proper, looks proper moody out there. Nice chop on the water and, like I say, a bit of drizzle and not cold at all. Just nothing, nothing seems to be giving itself away. So, like I say, it's gone 11 o'clock. So, um, what I'm going to do is just 
whip the rods in quickly, put some fresh baits on, get them straight back out on the spot. I think I'm gonna my right hander I'm gonna move from the island because I don't know, like last night or should I say like early hours of this morning after having that fish, I heard one crash out down to my right and quite close. It wasn't you know, it wasn't a thrashy bosch or anything, it seemed a fairly substantial substantial bosch to be fair. So I'm gonna um just under arm a lead down there. Um, and probably move that right hander from the island so just probably maybe over like halfway over or something like that just in catapult distance and just put a free you know 20 30 baits around that and just a hinge stiff on its own because um, if anything does get back down there in in the middle of the night or even throughout the day then um, it's going to be you know in in the zone as such but yeah I'm just not feeling that island rod anymore I like the two on the uh, the baited patch feel confident with them and like I say putting a bit of bait out over the top of them as well but this right hand I'm just going to drop out drop out down that right hand side margin or sort of in this right hand side zone and uh, see if we can nick ourselves one that way I just feel that right hand that right hand rod is kind of wasted now really it's not really fishing for me it's, it hadn't done anything it's had no indication that fish had been over the area or sort of on the bait I've had no liners or anything from it so just going to mix it up a little bit for the last 24 hours of the session and stick it down the right and see if anything happens for the rest of the day and tonight so let's get cracking dodge this uh dodge this drizzle drizzle if we can try and stay dry whilst we're doing things and uh see if we can nick ourselves a, a fish or two today bait and wise i'm just going to do um, regular and often just a couple of spawns every couple you know every couple of spawns every two or three hours just keep some fresh bait fresh attraction going into the area um, see if that can tempt or bring on a couple of fish and uh, maybe switch them on and get them interested so that's going to be my plan of attack for today I'll show you through my spod mix what I've been using um, for this session anyway and uh, just to give you an idea about what what the baiting sort of strategy is and what I've been using so uh, let's get these rods in, fresh baits, get them back out and see if we can nick ourselves a couple of extra fish. Welcome, my mix is boily. I reckon I've gone through about maybe about a kilo and a half so far this session. So, um, Let's have a little look in the bucket and see what see what's actually in the mix itself. So that's as much as I've got left at the moment. But yeah, that's boily, crushed boily. That's also got the Manila Active mix in there as well, just to kind of bind it together, make it quite gloopy and sticky. Um, chops, you know, um, all sorts of little bits and pieces, all based around the sort of nutty side of it and a couple of little secret ingredients that I've been using since uh, since June which again I think may have put an extra couple of fish on the bank for me I don't know but obviously there's no harm in using it and it's not done me uh, you know it's not done me bad yet so that's the main content of like the actual uh, boily content and then what I'm doing because obviously a lot of these fish have been just reared on pellets so they've seen pellet all the time pellet pellet pellets obviously get their growth rates on and uh, you know it's a quick and easy feed for them as they're obviously being being bred to put into fisheries like this so obviously it'd be silly of me not to use pellet in the mix as well I know a lot of pellet goes into this place because obviously they're trying to bring the fish on and you know bring them up to good weight so I've also got a little bucket of uh, sort of all, so, all shapes and sizes pellet wise really so there's I think there's some leftover krill pellet that I had from ages ago there's little micro pellets in there you know bigger sort of 10 mil pellets some uh, slightly smaller ones sort of 5 6 mil there's literally all shapes and sizes in there and I'm just adding them to the uh, adding them to the spom as well because that gives it a little bit of uh, weight when you Obviously filling up your to give it a little shake, it brings all the heaviness down to the front so it obviously flies out more true. But yeah, those pellets, obviously they're all different breakdown rates, obviously the heavier ones they'll sink straight to the bottom, them little ones will just flutter down and lay on any debris or anything like any of the silt that's out there. And obviously they're all break down at different rates, so giving off different oils at different speeds. And obviously some will turn to mush quicker, so there's going to be a nice little carpet of feed down there. Like I say, with this uh, boily mix on top as well, it's going to be something that's quite visible down there. Because like I say, it's quite silty, it's a really soft bottom. So 
got that mix and then three hinge stiffs which have all just been all just been critically balanced just obviously sit above this lot and uh, stay clear like I say of any bottom debris but that's kind of like my mix it is a nice it's a nice simple mix you know nothing over complicated no no thousand and one bits and pieces it is literally just boily something to bind it all together with like the active mix a little bit of water i made it quite uh quite sticky this mix so it gets down because it is like i say it's a bit deeper than normal places that i normally fish so i want it to get down to the bottom so i made it quite quite sticky a bit you know quite cement like so that's the mix that's what's been going out obviously it's done me that 24 pound or so far hoping for some more um like i say it's probably just gone midday now so topped up the spots now it's just a matter of sitting back and waiting to see if we can get any uh get any through the day if not hoping for another nighttime bite so let's go and uh let's go and get a brew and uh chill out for an hour so good morning then it's about half past eight sunday morning and uh sorry the updates have been a little bit slow but um seems to have shut up shop down here um, yesterday was pretty non-eventful all through the day although it looked absolutely banging for it literally it was so overcast it was drizzly it had a good chop on the water and um, yeah don't really see anything show let alone have any actual activity on the on the actual rods itself so yeah it was all a little bit strange um, kind of felt confident going into the night again thinking that I might be able to nick myself another night bite but um, the rod stayed absolutely motionless again. Um, no liners or anything. Um, it's a little bit strange to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I don't really know what's going what's going on. They've kind of really just uh, shut up shop since um, since Saturday morning. No one else has been catching around the lake that I'm aware of. I've not heard alarms or seen people, you know, bent into fish, etc. And. Uh, I think I'm now just going to be going home with that one that one fish under my belt, which obviously I'm not, you know, I'm not gutted about in any shape or form because you know to nick a fish on the first first session and it's be a 24 24 comma and that's that's you know happy days for me, but um, just feel like it, there should have been another one or two bites between us. Matt did have one last night, a 19 pounder, but that was that was really long off his area, so not even off his baited spot like you know like myself. He's just put a, a single out at range. So, first session under the belt nearly anyway, and obviously it's given me a little bit of idea about what to do maybe for the next session, maybe areas to go and target after seeing a number of shows and stuff like that. But um, yeah, at the, at the moment not a lot is happening. The water's flat, calm. There's no, no. Uh, turn the camera around. I'll just show. You. There's no ripple on the water or anything. But yeah, it's all it's all quiet. Nothing to report, unfortunately. Just a sunny blue morning. So, just going to go and have a brew or two. Wait for some of this stuff to dry off. Really, it's a bit, bit wet in places. So, uh, in no rush to disappear today. So, hopefully, I can maybe nick another one before I leave. But the rods are going to stay out until I go. Or well, they go. So, you never know what happens there from previous sessions. Milk every minute if you can. So. I'll catch up with you throughout the morning before I leave the venue and um, fingers crossed we can nick ourselves another fish. I'll catch up with you in a bit. Probably just gone midday and uh, still uneventful. Nothing's happened throughout the morning. We've seen a number of shows but uh, nothing to really say that they're going to be uh, getting on it or have had any liners or, any, or anything of any sort. Um, the two guys opposite me, they've now gone. Matt and Perry are both down this weekend. Uh, we were having a bit of a social. They've just uh, Perry left a little bit earlier this morning. Matt's just left, so it's just me now sorting out this mess over my shoulder. So obviously, as always, the rods are going to stay out to the very last minute. Might be a chance for a bite, but going by sort of like the last 24 hours at least, the chances are pretty slim. Matt's had a couple, so he had another one last night, and uh, I had that common. Saturday early hours of Saturday morning, so it's nice to obviously get a fish under the belt But um, I don't think we're gonna hang it out too much longer really because uh, Just doesn't feel that there's anything happening um, 
the baits have been in position literally since yesterday since I put them out with bait over the top etc and I've not even had any liners so don't really know what's uh, what's going on but like I say it's nice to have a, a fish on the first visit and obviously a 24 24 plus common so I can't really grumble especially when obviously the lake's not doing doing bites so what one of three fish that's been out this weekend and obviously that's one of them's mine so I can't yeah I can't really complain so um I'm gonna get this pack this lot packed down slowly and uh get on the road so this might be the last update from me anyway unless the you know unless it uh it changes in the next hour or so which obviously i'll flick the camera on for but hope this gives you a little insight into the the venue itself i will be spending probably a bit more time down here over the winter and stuff just maybe days or 24s depending on uh you know the weather situation because i feel that there is a better chance of a fish down here than at the normal syndicate but we'll play that by ear so i definitely hope to get down here again soon because um i've seen some of the fish and stuff like that on the facebook page and there are some real nice fish in here which i won't mind getting in my album so it's a good start first a fish on my first visit so yeah Let's leave it there. As always, obviously scrub, uh, subscribe to my channel. Even um, leave me a comment or any, you know, any any uh, likes are appreciated on the video. And um, yeah, hopefully I'll catch up with you sometime soon. I think for the rest of this month, October anyway, I'm going to try and focus on the other focus on the other syndicate. Um, as I feel there's probably a, a chance of a, a couple of fish or two due out of there over the next month or so. So I'll focus on that and leave this one for a, alone for a little while. Um, let's get this lot packed down. Try and get it all sorted so I can get home and get it put straight away. And um, I'll catch up with you sometime soon. So cheers for watching guys and I'll, uh, I'll speak to you soon.